You're probably familiar with the Bible passage where it says, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. That's Matthew 7, 7 to 8. And whenever there's a promise in the Bible, it's worth some further examination. What exactly is promised here? One could think that ask and it will be given to you is very general and means everything and nothing at once. Or another thinkable interpretation of that passage would be that this promises that when we ask, like for example, when we ask a question, we will always receive an answer. Now it turns out that this passage is not about asking for information, at least not primarily. The ancient Greek word for ask, which is used in the original text here, is aiteo, which means asking for something. The Greek word for asking about something or asking for information is erotao, and it's not used here. Why am I dissecting this passage today? The reason is that I'd like to bring the value and the importance of asking for information into proper perspective. In other words, what's the value and the importance of apologetics and similar things? I'll discuss this both for the perspective of a faithful Christian and for the perspective of an atheist or an agnostic. As far as I can see, God never promised that everyone will understand everything about Christianity. Don't get me wrong, understanding and knowledge are strongly encouraged in the Bible. But God doesn't promise that every endeavor to understand will be fruitful. As you can see from my previous videos, and you will see in the future, I love apologetics. But God never promised that trying to understand Christianity will lead to salvation. There's no point in understanding, let's say, the metaphysics behind the impossibility of infinite regresses in support of the second premise of the Kalam cosmological argument if that doesn't ultimately lead to eternal life and salvation. As it says in the Gospel of Matthew 16.26, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? The ultimate goal is to become a saint. Showing the logical consistency of Christianity has its place, and I'm the first one to defend the importance of apologetics. But it's not the most important thing. So what is more important than that? What is salvation promised for in the Bible? Before I share the relevant Bible passages, I'd like to quote St. Alphonsus Liguori, who said the following. He who prays is certainly saved. He who prays not is certainly damned. All the blessed, except infants, have been saved by prayer. All the damned have been lost through not praying. If they had prayed, they would not have been lost. And this is, and will be, their greatest torment in hell, to think how easily they might have been saved only by asking God for His grace. But that now it is too late. The time of prayer is over. That's in essence the meaning of the Bible passage we started with today. Ask and it will be given to you. Ask for the grace to be saved, and God will take care of the rest. Reading and talking about God is great, but talking to God is much more important. It's actually crucial. It's essential for salvation. This applies to people who have never believed in God, lukewarm Christians, and also people aiming for sainthood. No matter where you are in your faith journey, prayer is essential. As it says in John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. Father David Michael also drove that point home recently, and as always, with a good portion of humor. So here's my pet peeve. I'll be talking to someone, and maybe Catholicism comes up. And they say, oh, I grew up Catholic. Super Catholic. I went to Catholic school. I was an altar server. My grandmother prayed the rosary every night. But as I got older, I just figured it out, and I don't really need it anymore. And I want to say, ah, oh, you figured it out. <laughs> got it. You were really living it, super faithful, but then you figured it out. St. Padre Pio never really got to your level, right? <laughs> Mother Teresa never figured it out like you did. John Paul II just never really got to where you're at. It's sad to see someone use familiarity with the faith as a reason for dismissing its power. All of those saints were praying. A lot. You might have heard of the quote from Blessed Carlo Acutis, The Eucharist is my highway to heaven. 
And I've been thinking a long time about the following question. If the Eucharist is the highway to heaven, what is reading about God in relation to that? Is it a staircase? Maybe a rope to pull oneself up? A trail? When we take a look in the Bible, it turns out that reading about God isn't even necessarily a way that leads to God at all. The Eucharist, being the highway to heaven, is biblically supported in John 6, 53. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And if we look at other passages where salvation is promised, none hint at reading about God. Reading helps, that's for sure, because sooner or later you'll read that prayer is necessary. My point is that there are saints who never read a single book. But there are no saints that never prayed. So let's look at the Bible passages where salvation or eternal life is promised. We have passages that link faith to salvation. But we know from James 2.17 that faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. So salvation is also promised for the following works. Loving God and your neighbor. Keeping the Ten Commandments and doing God's will. In the next step, also detaching from worldly things. And here I've made a video about what that passage means in practice, and the link to that video will be in the description. Apart from that, repentance is necessary for salvation, and finally also perseverance. However, and that's where Catholics and Protestants agree, one cannot merit salvation. Salvation is ultimately grace, so a gift from God, and as I've said before, it has to be asked for. In Ephesians 2, 8 to 9, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not because of your works, lest any man should boast. We have to ask for this grace, and it will be given to us. In fact, it says in the Bible that we should pray at all times. And if you need some ideas on how to put that into practice, I've also made a video about that. So that shows how crucial prayer is. We are actually called to pray at all times. And as far as I know, it doesn't say anywhere in the Bible that we have to read. There are people who couldn't read and were saved. Like, for example, St. Catherine of Siena. She was illiterate, but she became a saint and even a doctor of the church. Now, if you're not sure how to start praying or how to deepen your prayer life, I'd like to recommend a booklet which I read recently. It's called How to Converse with God, and it was written by St. Alphonsus Liguori. It's only about 80 pages long, but it contains the content of many other books on less pages. I've essentially talked about its content in a collection of previous videos, so that's why there won't be a separate summary of the book. But if you haven't read all those books yet, I highly recommend How to Converse with God. Maybe you've never experienced the effectiveness of prayer, so you have your doubts about that. I understand that, since if you pray for the grace to become a saint, you'll only be able to check if that's true after you're dead. If that's the case, if you have some doubts about that, I'd like to encourage you to pray for humility. If you need some inspiration on how to pray for humility, I can recommend to you the Litany of Humility. The link is in the description. But I need to warn you, the prayer will work, and you'll notice that. Humility is usually gained from humbling or humiliating experiences. So to be real, I personally started asking God to be gentle with me when gifting me humility. But if you've never seen a prayer work in your life, ask for humility without the extra gentle treatment. So the conclusion of this video is let's stay focused on the end goal. The end goal is to become a saint. If you like to read about apologetics, that's great. Continue doing that. But don't forget to read books about other topics as well that lead you towards sanctity. And ultimately, don't forget to talk to God in prayer. So keep your eyes on the prize. God bless and see you soon.